this is our first lesson and it is about framework of grammar in this lesson we will come to know what is basically the structure of grammar what are the major areas of grammar what is the framework of grammar these are some of the topics we will discuss in this lesson the first is grammar second branches of grammar it has two parts formal or traditional grammar functional grammar then we have formal or traditional grammar further this formal or traditional grammar it has further two levels two parts the first is descriptive grammar the second is prescriptive grammar we move on to the next we have the descriptive grammar again this descriptive grammar has two levels the first is word word level grammar and the second is sentence level grammar <coughs> then we have prescriptive grammar then we shall discuss about difference between descriptive and prescriptive grammar and then we have functional grammar these are some of the topics we shall discuss in this lesson so let us first start with the discussion of what is grammar we are very much familiar with this term we have always studied the subject of grammar since our childhood during the school days and so on and we know a lot of grammar this and that we know that we have done a lot of uh, grammatical exercises and so on but exactly what does it mean what is the definition what does grammar basically deal with here we are going to discuss the philosophical part of grammar not in the traditional sense that we have studied grammar books so let us come to discuss our first point the first point is grammar is the system of a language system of a language when we say system it is very much related to science because scientific knowledge has system has certain patterns can be proved can be verified so grammar is the system of a language go on to the next people sometimes describe grammar as the rules of a language of course when we say system of a language in other words you can say grammar being described as the rules of a language because in grammar what do we basically find we find so many different rules for so many types of sentences briefly we can say grammar is the law of language go to the point number 3 grammar is the way we arrange words to make proper sentences of course grammar helps us to produce correct sentences correct utterances it helps us how to arrange words into proper manner in to proper way so that we can produce a very good and beautiful meaningful sentences go to the next point it is a way of describing the structure of phrases and sentences grammar also helps us to describe how phrases are used in the sentence and how phrases help in the making of sentences how basically the structure of language is built up grammar helps in many other different ways to know about language to learn about language 
we move on to the next we have some more points about grammar in the continuation of what we have just talked about so the next point about grammar is grammar accounts for all of the grammatical sequences and rules out all the ungrammatical sequences sequences look here grammar always considers always in favor of grammatical sequences that is to say correct patterns and rules out when you follow grammar what do we do we are very careful in making our sentences correctly we are very careful in creating our sentences correctly we are very careful about making our sentences sentences free from any mistake so when we talk about grammar account for all of the grammatical sequences sequences it means that correct sequences and rules out all the ungrammatical sequences it means that grammar rules out disowns rejects all the ungrammatical sequences all the ungrammatical patterns basically what is language language is a system of patterns we follow certain patterns in the language so when we follow certain patterns in the language the grammar is all about correct sequences of those patterns and rejects not being correct sequences of those patterns that is the meaning of this point go to the next providing such an account involves us in the study of grammar and providing such an account discussion of such an account such a story of grammatical sequences and ungrammatical sequences we find all these things in the study of grammar and we have example look at the example if you see the example you will find that there are we have a pattern of grammatical sequences and we have the pattern of ungrammatical sequences look at the first phrase the lucky boys this phrase the lucky boys it has grammatical sequences it has correct patterns therefore it is correct but go to the next example boys the lucky it does not have grammatical sequences it does not have correct patterns so we can call it ungrammatical sequences therefore it is false likewise go to the third example lucky boys the this phrase also does not have grammatical sequences it has ungrammatical sequences does not have correct patterns does not have correct system therefore grammar talks about all those grammatical sequences and rejects all those ungrammatical sequences and to study this point of view of language is known as grammar so this is about explanation of grammar this is about what is grammar this is about what we know grammar is so now it's clear what is grammar now we move on to the next branches of grammar look there are two major branches of grammar the first is formal or traditional grammar sometimes we call it formal grammar or sometimes we also call it traditional grammar the second is functional grammar let us first discuss about formal or traditional grammar what is this point number 1 it is a framework for the study of the structure of a language look formal or traditional grammar it is a framework framework means it is a structure it is like uh, an outline for the study of the structure of a language means formal or traditional grammar helps us to study the structure of language go to the next point 
It has its root in the work of classical Greek and Latin language. Look, formal or traditional grammar finds its root, traces its root in the work of classical languages like Greek and Latin. Look, at one point of time in the history of language, Greek language and Latin language in the past, they were very famous and other languages like English, they used to derive all the grammatical rules from those languages. Therefore, formal or traditional grammar, it has its root in the work of classical languages like Greek and Latin. Go to the next. It is also known as a school grammar. Look, traditional grammar or formal grammar is also generally known as a school grammar, which we have been studying since our childhood during our school days. Go to the next. It is the most widespread and elaborate grammar and is widely used in language teaching all over the world. Look, formal or traditional grammar is the widely used grammar all over the world. It is widespread and uh, it's elaborate, means that its the scope is very wide and people all over the world in some way or the other are familiar with formal or traditional grammar. Why? Because we have always studied this kind of grammar in our school days. Go to the next. Functional grammar. Functional grammar is different from formal or traditional grammar. Functional grammar, look at the first point. Functional grammar is used to describe language in actual use. Look, functional grammar is to describe how language is used in the actual situation, in the real situation. It does not talk about grammatical patterns. It does not talk about the grammatical rules. It talks about how language is used in real situations. Go to the next point. Its focus is on texts and their contexts. Look, functional grammar focuses more upon texts and their contexts. What does it mean is that, look, text is any spoken or written expression. So anything that we speak or anything that you write, every text has its own context and is has its own background. Without context, without background, any text cannot happen, cannot come into birth. So this kind of functional grammar looks upon the text, how it has been created and what effect it has upon the speaker and the writer. That is why its focus is on texts and their contexts. Go to the Point number three, this type of grammar sets a language as a resource for making meaning. Look, this type of grammar looks at language from the perspective of meaning. Somebody has written something, there is a text, there is a paragraph. You may talk about that paragraph grammatically in a traditional manner. In a formal manner, you can talk about uh, what are the words and the phrases and so on. That's okay. That is the formal way of looking at the text. But the functional way of looking at the text or any written piece is that it looks at its meaning. One text sometimes may have different meanings from different angles depending upon how you look at so this is the point here. This type of grammar sets a language as a resource for making meaning. So one text sometimes can have different meanings depending upon how you look at it and how you interpret. And this is the area of functional grammar. Go to the next.
पॉइंट नंबर फोर फंक्शनल ग्रामर डिस्कसेज एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द सर्कमस्टांसेज अंडर विच पीपुल इंटर इन टू वर्बल और रिटर्न कॉम्युनिकेशन लुक हियर फंक्शनल ग्रामर ऑल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट सर्टन एस्पेक्ट द सर्कमस्टांसेज इन विच पीपुल इंटर इन टू वर्बल और रिटर्न कॉम्युनिकेशन लुक वेन आई एम स्पीकिंग एट द मोमेंट वट इज मेकिंग मी स्पीक अबाउट what is inspiring me what is motivating me to speak something what is uh, helping someone to write something so the circumstances in which people are forced to speak or forced to write or inspired to speak or inspired to write those circumstances are very important and functional grammar look at those circumstances because they are very important until we have context until we have background until there is something that inspires you and motivates you you are not going to speak or you are not going to write so the inspiration that you get in the background to speak or to write something is as important as grammatical items so the functional grammar looks at these aspects of language and the last point of this slide functional grammar as explained by haliday 1994 is concerned with meanings haliday is a very famous linguist he has written a very famous book an introduction to functional grammar he says functional grammar is basically concerned with meanings from different perspectives that is why sometimes when you read the holy book of quran or any book of drama or poetry any text you pick up sometimes the same text will have different meanings to different people in different conditions why does it happen how does it happen that the same text could have different meanings to different people all these aspects of meanings are discussed in the subject matter of functional grammar we go to the next now we go back to the types of formal or traditional grammar look here we have two types of formal or traditional grammar the first is descriptive grammar and the second is prescriptive grammar let us first discuss descriptive grammar point number 1 it describes the language as it is used not saying how it should be used in descriptive grammar just describes the language as it is used it does not tell you how it should be used means that descriptive grammar just describes the grammatical parts of the language that's all go to the point number 2 descriptive grammar is objective non judgmental description of the grammatical constructions in a language look here descriptive grammar is objective when i say objective means scientific non judgmental description of the grammatical constructions in a language non judgmental means you have not to express your feelings in describing grammatical items in descriptive grammar when you talk about rules when you talk about system of a language it has nothing to do with your emotions it is nothing to do with your uh, what you call judgmental description of the language you are not going to impose your own idea you have to follow the facts you have to follow the systems you have to be objective not subjective so therefore descriptive grammar is always objective and it looks at grammatical constructions in a very scientific manner go to the next point number 3 it is a set of rules about language as i told you it is a set of rules about language it talks about the system of language it looks at language from the scientific point of view and describes each element scientifically this is about descriptive grammar we move on 
to the next with some more ideas about descriptive grammar. Look at this grammar is of most interest to a linguist as he or she is concerned with the nature of language. Look how language works, the nature of language. That is to say is that the descriptive grammar is of most interest to a linguist because linguist is the person who looks at language from scientific point of view. Go to the next. The descriptive grammar has a very long tradition and the descriptive grammar people have been studying about this type of grammar since long. It is a long tradition. We can have its root in the languages of classical Greek and Latin. Go to the next. It studies grammar at two levels. Further, descriptive grammar can be studied at two different levels. Number one, word level grammar. Number two, sentence level grammar. Now, what are word level grammar and sentence level grammar? Move on to the next. Word level grammar. It covers or studies nine parts of a speech such as when we say word level grammar, it means that to study grammar at the level of words, to discuss about grammatical items at the level of parts of a speech. That is why we say it covers or studies nine parts of a speech. And what are the nine parts of a speech? You can read nouns and we have examples of noun, teacher, marry, town. We have pronouns, he, she, it. Number three, verbs, example, go, come, is. Fourth, adverbs, example, slowly, really, extremely. Number five, adjectives, example, good, bad, beautiful. Number six, prepositions, example, at, in, from. Number seven, determiners, example, this, that, and. Number eight, conjunctions, example, and, but, though, interjections, example, alas, ah, er. These are some of the what we call nine parts of a speech and in descriptive grammar we have the two levels word level grammar and it covers nine parts of a speech and we study grammar at the word level it means we look at all those nine parts of a speech and how they are used in a sentence or in the making of sentence how they are applied and so on go to the next we have sentence level grammar. Previously, we talked about word level grammar. Now we are going to talk about sentence level grammar. It covers or studies number one, phrases. And we have noun phrase, verb phrase, adjectival phrase, and so on, etc. We have many types of phrases. So at the sentence level, when we study, uh, this type of grammar at sentence level, we have to follow all these steps like phrases, then we have second sentences, then we have clause clauses, and we have main clause, subordinate clause, adjectival clause, and so on. And then we have reported a speech, and so on. So, what here we mean to say is that at sentence level, when we study grammar, we talk about, we discuss about phrases. We discuss about sentences, clauses, reported speech, and so on. So we have this two levels of uh, studying descriptive grammar. Now we move on to the next. Prescriptive grammar. The term prescriptive grammar refers to a set of norms or rules governing how a language should or should not be used 
rather than describing the ways in which a language is actually used. Look here, in the prescriptive grammar, prescriptive grammar, prescribed grammar. It does not describe grammar. When I say descriptive grammar, the descriptive grammar describes grammar. But the prescriptive grammar prescribes grammar, means that how language should be used and how language should not be used. That is the manner in which language is used. The way we use the language is part of prescriptive grammar. Where to use the language, how to use the language. This is the area of the subject of prescriptive grammar. It does not describe the language as it is used. Rather, how it should be used, we talk about this thing in prescriptive grammar. We'll go to the point number two. It is more about your style and manner of speaking and writing in a particular set of environment. It means it is the style of your speech, manner of your writing, how you should use the language, where you should the language, and so on. This is the area of prescriptive grammar. It does not discuss at all about set of rules for the grammar. Point number three, it deals with right and wrong or good and bad use of language. So that is why prescriptive grammar prescribes how should they use the language? What is the right way? What is the wrong way? What is the good way of using the language? What is the bad way of using the language? For example, I know language, but how to present myself, how to speak myself with a teacher. This way of speaking with a teacher, my way of speaking with my parents, my way of speaking with my children, the manner, the style, the way I choose what to speak, this way of looking at language is the area of the subject matter of prescriptive grammar. But descriptive grammar is different. That just describes the language as it is. So okay, so now we move on to the next difference between descriptive and prescriptive grammar. When you know the difference, your idea will be very much clear about what is descriptive grammar and what is prescriptive grammar. Look at the first point. Both descriptive and prescriptive types of grammar are concerned with language but in their own different ways. Look, both types of grammar like descriptive and like prescriptive, they are concerned with the language but they deal with language in their own different ways. How? Go to the next point number two. A specialists in descriptive grammar, a specialist means experts in descriptive grammar called linguists study the rules or patterns that underlie how words, phrases, clauses are used in sentences. Look, in descriptive grammar, like particularly and the specialists like linguists, they study the rules, they study the patterns of the language, they look into how words are used, how phrases are used, how clauses are used and how do such things such elements help in making sentences. Go to the point number three. On the other hand, prescriptive grammarians such as most editors and teachers lay out rules about what they believe to be the correct or incorrect use of language. Look, prescriptive grammars or prescriptive grammarians such as Readers and teachers, look here, I know English or you know Arabic, but the way you speak Arabic is not the same your brother speaks, your sister speaks. They speak differently, we all speak differently. And uh, likewise, we have editors, the writers, the poets, they use language, but they use language in their own different ways. And sometimes they lay out rules. Sometimes they, when they write in the process of writing, sometimes they set certain rules that this way of communication, this way of expression is what they believe is the correct way. 
like William Shakespeare, William Wordsworth, they experimented in so many different ways with the language and people in the beginning did not accept but later they found those sentences to be in the best of a style. So prescriptive grammarians or prescriptive grammar is all about how language should be used, what is the correct way of using language, what is the good way of using language, whether it is right use, wrong use and so on and so forth. So this is the difference between descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar. Just keep in mind, descriptive grammar, it describes language. Prescriptive grammar, it prescribes language. It helps you, it motivates you how to use language in a beautiful way and so on. We move on to the next and we have questions what we have studied so far. The first point we discussed about grammar and upon the basis of our first point there is one question what is grammar? Write in detail. Write in detail means write all the points which we have discussed about grammar. Go to the question number two. What are the two main branches of grammar? What are the two main branches of grammar? Just write the point, two points. No need to explain here. And the two main branches of grammar we have is the number one, formal or traditional grammar. And number two, functional grammar. Go to the question number three. What is formal or traditional grammar? Explain in detail. So this, we explain this in detail. What is formal or traditional grammar? We have just talked about, write all the points. Question number four, what is functional grammar? Write in detail. Now talk about the elements, talk about the points which we have discussed about functional grammar. Write in detail. All the answers are already available in the slides which we have just discussed. Go to the next. Type questions two, continuation of the question part. Question number five, what are the types of formal or traditional grammar? We have talked about the two types. The number one, descriptive grammar. Number two, prescriptive grammar. Just write the names, don't describe. Go to question number six. What is descriptive grammar? Write in detail. This you write in detail. We talked about descriptive grammar. Write all the points. Go to question number seven. What is prescriptive grammar? Explain in detail. Now we have talked a lot about prescriptive grammar. So write in detail. Write all the points. When I say write in detail means write all the points. You cover all the points. Don't write briefly. Don't write in short. We move on to the next. We have the continuation of the questions. Page number three. We have question number eight. What are the two levels of descriptive grammar? And we talked about two levels. Write the names only. We have word level grammar and we have sentence level grammar. Question number nine. What do you mean by word level grammar? Write about it. We talked about word level grammar that it covers or deals with nine parts of a speech. So write about them. Question number 10. What do you mean by sentence level grammar? Explain it in detail. So we talked about sentence level grammar that we talk about phrase and the sentences and the clauses and the reported speech and so on. Please write about that. And question number 11. What is difference between descriptive and prescriptive grammar? Write in detail. So sorry, there is a question mark is missing. It should There should not be full stop. It should be question mark here. But anyway, what is difference between descriptive and prescriptive grammar? Write in detail. So write in detail. What is the difference between descriptive grammar and prescriptive grammar, which, which we just discussed about. And I think you have understood this lesson perfectly well. And this is the end of our lesson first in functional grammar. Goodbye.